Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be working through some requested extra example problems on the viscosity of fluids. The solutions to these problems will use the theory covered in a previous video where we learnt about viscosity, so I will leave the link to that in the description for you to check out if you wish to. Additionally, as we progress through the example problems, you are welcome to pause the video at any point to attempt the questions on your own before we work through the solutions together. So starting off with a simpler problem then, we have a table containing three fluids. We have a light oil which has a density of 0.875 grams per centimetre cubed and a dynamic viscosity of 0.11 pascal seconds. Some gasoline which has a density of 0.75 grams per centimetre cubed and a dynamic viscosity of 0.6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 pascal seconds and some salt water which has a density of 1.02 grams per centimetre cubed and a dynamic viscosity of 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. For each of these fluids, calculate the kinematic viscosity. If you did pause the video to attempt this question, welcome back, and now let's work through it together. From the previous video, we learnt that the kinematic viscosity of a fluid is equal to the dynamic viscosity of the fluid divided by the density. And we also need to note that the densities of each fluid have been given to us in grams per centimetre cubed. However, we need them in kilograms per metre cubed. So, first of all, we will convert the densities of each fluid into kilograms per metre cubed. To do this, we must multiply our current densities by 1000. And doing so, we can work out that the density of our light oil is 875 kilograms per meter cubed, the density of the gasoline is 750 kilograms per meter cubed, and the density of the salt water is 1020 kilograms per meter cubed. Having worked out the densities in kilograms per meter cubed, we can now work out the units for kinematic viscosity using our equation. The unit for dynamic viscosity is Pascal seconds which is equivalent to force per unit area divided by the rate of shear, and the dynamic viscosity is being divided by the density. By eliminating common terms, we can work out that the units for kinematic viscosity is meter squared per second. Now, we can substitute our values into our equation. Doing this, the kinematic viscosity of our light oil is equal to 0.11 divided by 875 which equals 0.125 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters squared per second. The kinematic viscosity of the gasoline is equal to 0.6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 750, which equals 0.8 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters squared per second. And finally, the kinematic viscosity of salt water is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the power of minus 3 divided by 1020 which equals 1.03 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters squared per second. So, well done if you got all of those correct, but now let's have a look at a slightly more complicated problem. A plain slab of negligible thickness has a cross-sectional area of 1.5 meters squared and is resting on the surface of a 2 millimeter deep layer of oil. The oil has a density of 875 kilograms per meter cubed and a kinematic viscosity of 0.125 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters squared per second. Calculate the force required to move the slab horizontally at a constant speed of 25 centimeters per second. For this problem, we will use the equation force equals stress times area, and also Newton's law of viscosity, where the applied shear stress, tau, is equal to the dynamic viscosity multiplied by the rate of shear strain. Again, you'll be able to find the derivation for Newton's law of viscosity in the original video. Combining these equations, we get the force required to push the slab, F, is equal to A times mu times du by dz. For our problem, we have been provided with the kinematic viscosity of the oil, but we need the dynamic viscosity to find the force. So, to find the dynamic viscosity of the oil, we must multiply the density by the kinematic viscosity. So, the dynamic viscosity of the oil, mu, is equal to 875 times 0.125 times 10 to the power of minus 3, which equals 0.11 pascal seconds. Therefore, for our equation, the cross-sectional area, 
a is equal to 1.5 meter squared, the dynamic viscosity mu is equal to 0.11 pascal seconds, and we can say that du by dz is approximately equal to delta u over delta z, where the change in velocity delta u is equal to 25 centimeters per second, which equals 0.25 meters per second, and the depth of the oil delta z is equal to 2 millimeters, which equals 0.002 meters. Substituting these into our equation, we get that the force required to move the slab horizontally at the specified speed, F, is approximately equal to 1.5 times 0.11 times 0.25 over 0.002, which equals 20.625 newtons. So we can conclude that the force required to move the slab horizontally at a constant speed of 25 centimeters per second is approximately equal to 20.6 newtons. For the third example problem, we have a cylindrical block of metal that weighs 9.5 kilograms. The block has a thickness of 15 centimeters and a diameter of 12.5 centimeters, and it is sliding down an oil lubricated tube, as we can see in the diagram. And also, the clearance between the block and the tube is 0.025 millimeters. If the block decelerates at 0.64 meters per second squared when the velocity is 6.4 meters per second, what is the viscosity of the lubricating oil? The solution to this problem follows a similar process to the previous question, just with a few more steps involved. So if you were happy in your understanding of example problem 2, this one would be a good problem to test that. We will start off by recalling our equation where the friction force applied to the block, which we will denote FF, is equal to the applied shear strain multiplied by the area of the block in contact with the oil. And we also need Newton's law of viscosity, where the applied shear strain, tau, is equal to mu times du by dz. We can combine these equations to give us ff equals a mu du by dz. And using this and the quantities we have been provided, we will be able to calculate the frictional force applied to the block by the oil. However, we are going to keep it as an expression for now, for simplicity. Having derived that expression, we must now recall that the sum of all forces applied to the block is equal to the mass of the block times the acceleration. We have already expressed the frictional force, but we also have the weight of the block due to gravity, which is equal to mg. Taking the downwards direction to be positive, as this is the direction the block is moving in, and substituting the forces into our equation for the sum of forces, we get W minus FF which equals mg minus a mu du by dz equals ma. Note that for the sum of forces we are subtracting ff from w as ff is being applied in the upwards direction, which for us is negative in this example. Now we just need to rearrange the equation for the dynamic viscosity of the oil, mu. I have sped through the rearranging but you're welcome to pause it to take a closer look at the steps, but having rearranged the equation, we get mu is equal to m times by g minus a, all divided by a, times by dz by du. So we have derived an expression for the dynamic viscosity containing only variables that we know the values of, or that we can work out. As stated in the question, the mass of the block m is equal to 9.5 kilograms. It is standard knowledge that gravity, g, is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, and also provided to us, the deceleration of the block is 0.64 meters per second squared. So the acceleration of the block, A, is equal to negative 0.64 meters per second squared. This diagram here demonstrates the area of the block in contact with the oil. And that's the side of the cylindrical block that has been shaded green. The top and bottom surfaces do not come into contact. Therefore, we can calculate that the area A is equal to pi times the diameter of the block, multiplied by the height of the block. So, a is equal to pi times 0.125 times 0.15, which equals 0.059 meters squared. dz is the thickness of the oil, which equals 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, and du is the velocity of the block, which is 6.4 meters per second. Having stated the quantities to all required variables, we can now substitute them into our equation for the dynamic viscosity. 
So mu is equal to 9.5 times by 9.81 minus negative 0.64 all divided by 0.059 times by 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 5 divided by 6.4. And this equals 6.573 times 10 to the power of minus 3 pascal seconds. So we can conclude that the dynamic viscosity of a lubricating oil is 6.57 times 10 to the power of minus 3 pascal seconds. For the final example problem, we have a slightly more complicated question than the one in the original video. A 20 kilogram block slides down a surface on a 3 millimeter thick film of oil. The surface is inclined at 40 degrees and the area at the bottom surface of the block in contact with the oil is 0.3 meters squared. Given that the oil has a specific weight of 7850 newtons per meter cubed and a kinematic viscosity of 1.25 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meters squared per second, calculate the terminal velocity of the block. For this question, we must recognize that when the block is sliding down the surface at terminal velocity, it is not accelerating anymore, and therefore the block is in equilibrium. With this, we can say that the sum of all forces must be equal to zero. So we will start off by solving for all forces in the x-coordinate plane. And note that the x-coordinate plane is parallel to the slope for us. Summarizing all of the forces, we have the weight of the block acting in the downwards vertical direction, which is equal to the mass of the block times gravity. And we also have the force applied to the block due to the friction from the oil. And as we have seen in the previous three questions, this force is equal to the applied shear stress times the area of the block in contact with the oil. Using trigonometry, we can work out that the x component of the weight is equal to w sine theta, and this is acting in the positive x direction. And then, using intuition, we know that the frictional force applied to the bottom of the block is acting in the negative x direction. Therefore, the sum of all forces in the x-coordinate plane is equal to w sine theta minus tau a, which equals zero. Newton's law of viscosity says that tau is equal to mu times du by dz, where mu is the dynamic viscosity of the oil, dz is the thickness of the oil layer, and du is the velocity of the block, which is ultimately what we are trying to calculate. Substituting this into our equation for the sum of forces in the x-coordinate plane, we get w sine theta minus a mu du by dz equals zero. And rearranging for du, we get du equals w sine theta dz all divided by mu a. Now we have an expression where we already know or can calculate the values for every variable other than the velocity. So now it is just a case of working out these variables so that we can substitute them in. And the only variable we actually need to calculate is the dynamic viscosity of the oil, mu. The dynamic viscosity is equal to the density times the kinematic viscosity, and the density of the oil is equal to the specific weight divided by gravity. So mu is equal to gamma over g multiplied by nu. So mu is equal to 7850 divided by 9.81 times by 1.25 times 10 to the power of minus 3 which equals 1.00 pascal seconds. With the weight of the block, w equals 20 times 9.81, the incline of the surface, theta, equals 40 degrees, the thickness of the oil, dz, equals 0.003 meters, the dynamic viscosity of the oil, mu, equals 1 pascal seconds, and the area of the block that's in contact with the oil, a, equals 0.3 meters squared, the terminal velocity of the block, du, is equal to 20 times 9.81 times sine 40 times 0.003 all divided by 1 times 0.3, which equals 1.26 meters per second. So we can conclude that when the block reaches its terminal velocity when sliding down the slope, it is traveling at a speed of 1.26 meters per second. To recap then, we have seen how we can implement the theoretical principles of viscosity into real life problems, specifically with the use of Newton's law of viscosity. This concludes the example problems for this video, and I hope you have found them useful in solidifying your understanding of the topic. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, 
please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.